Ladies and gentlemen, the Magic Castle is proud to present the Vice President of the Academy of Magical Arts and your MC for this evening. Please welcome Mr. Jim Steinmeier. Thank you all very much and welcome to the Magic Castle, to the Academy of Magical Arts, and to the most famous theater of magic in all the world, the Palace of Mystery. Tonight, this is the end of the week, we have a very special program for you of history. Um, you've all read the program, I assume? Yes. There'll be a quiz on this afterwards. Please turn in your papers at the back bar. No, it's not, don't worry about that. Uh, it's very, very simple to explain. This is the back story. I'll do it very quickly. Uh, we, uh, a small group of us, do a conference every two years in Los Angeles about historical magic. We bring writers, historians, collectors, magicians together and we talk about magic that was done in the past. And we're always mindful of the stories that are just about to get go beyond our grasp and we'll never get them back again. Uh, and one of those, for example, Harry Keller. Harry Keller was America's leading magician in the year 1900 and the years right around that time. He was the inspiration for the character of the Wizard of Oz. When L. Frank Baum was writing that book, Harry Keller was the leading magician. And you'll see that Oscar Diggs, the Wizard of Oz, sounds an awful lot like Harry Keller in that book. Um, when I was a kid growing up in Chicago, tr learning to be a magician, I knew old guys who had seen Keller perform, which sends a chill down my spine because he retired in 1908. <laughs> I was a really little kid. And they were really old. <laughs> and now I'm really old. And, uh, but, but the point is, um, there is no good record of Keller. We have little scant recollections of him. We have a couple accounts of his tricks, and uh, one or two of those are a little better than, a couple, than just accounts. And so when we organized the last conference, we thought it would be great. This is our last chance. We have this tenuous connection, and all these connections are going away quickly. It'd be great to see Keller on stage, to really get a modern performer to interpret this and to put himself in the head of a 19th century magician. And we did it, it was fantastic. And I think that one of the keys is that we got a great, great illusionist, modern illusionist, Nicholas Knight, to take on this task. Anyway, we had so much fun with it, we thought we would bring Keller to the Magic Castle for the first time, where he deserves to be. He retired to Los Angeles in 1908. He lived just down the street on Ardmore Avenue. So, ladies and gentlemen, with enormous pleasure, we bring you a few minutes with Harry Keller as presented by Nicholas Knight.
I'm Harry Keller, and I've been performing that mystery for most of my career. A simple trick, yes, but one you get to know quite well. Let's see, by my calculations, I must have grown nearly a quarter of a million roses by magic. <laughs> Which qualifies me for some sort of award, I suppose. But best of all, no dirt beneath my fingernails. <laughs> well, speaking of roses, I'm often told that the first roses that bloom in the summer are the most beautiful of them all. Well, as luck would have it, the season is upon us. The roses are in bloom. And they are spectacular. I invite you all to see for yourself. I'd like to discuss. In my years before the public, some 30 years before the public, I found nothing more disreputable than the aging wizard who refuses to leave the stage, and his endless wheezes about the superiority of the old magic, particularly when today we find ourselves surrounded by so much wonderful new magic. No, there was no special wizardry in us old wizards, and you won't hear me prattling on about the good old days. I was proud to present the mysteries that your grandparents, your great-grandparents, came to the theater to see. They were my friends. They were my audience. And these were the tricks that they enjoyed. This next trick I learned in Mexico, where the Mexican wizards prepare their coffee extra strong. I perform it without any coffee, that's what constitutes a trick. <laughs> I call it the coffee mystery. And the mystery? Where's the coffee? <laughs> On this side of the stage, you'll see I have a large vase which I shall fill with blue paper. Or as they say in Mexico, papel azul. <laughs> On the other side of the stage, I have another large container. This one filled to the brim with bran, or as they say in Mexico, azer. Keep your eye on the azer, for I shall try to fool you, especially you. <laughs> and in the center, the smallest container of all, just large enough to hold a handful of white paper, or as they say in Mexico, papel blanco. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the coffee mystery. Vamanos! You'll see that our blue paper has transformed into piping hot coffee. <laughs> transformed into white lump sugar. Two lumps, that's how I like it. One, two, and one for you, young lady in the back. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how the Mexican wizards <laughs> Nicholas Knight, ladies and gentlemen.
every day, and the reason is, is because they stopped making that stuff. Uh, uh, the apparatus for that is as old as Keller is. Uh, he was loaned to us uh, by a member who was on the board of directors, John Gaughan.